with us. It is in your word we pray that you are here gathered together in your name as you are in the us. We thank you because you are here that principalities never give the powers of our ready for spoil. Now just let our hearts be prepared to hear from you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. You may have your seat just a little and just a little. Here we're going to bring the book, the man of God, a pastor and his wife, pastor, and all the other pastors that is here. Everyone, I want to thank God for this opportunity. Amen. God is good all the time. As I said to the man of God, I'm here just to complement what God are doing in this season, in this island. And I'm not sure what I've not seen God has been doing in my life and also in our church and also in the nation. We are about to take over the nation. And when the man of God really called and asked me to be here, it wasn't an easy time because tomorrow is Mother's Day, so I say, Blessed Mother's Day to all the mothers. And, but I just sense that sometimes you have to put your normal program and agenda aside for what heaven wants. Amen. So tonight, uh, we want us to look at a message that is going to be twofold. As I opened your screen, because I was in Angola earlier this year, the Lord spoke to me. He said, My son, the season has come for the church to deal with the strata over the nation. He said, This is the season. He said, For too long have we attacked the foot soldiers. And it is simple like this, and as you were showing me the past of one of the interview, whenever you watch a movie, this, the movie always comes to an end. At what point? When the bad man in the movie, the star will fight his way up and destroy and kill. And, but the movie never ends until it gets to a shoulder between the star and the bar. I want us to understand that we are in the last and the closing days. And there must be a shoulder. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? The important thing about this shoulder is that the outcome has a red. No, 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 you didn't sound like you were excited about it. <laughs> when I was much younger, I used to love to watch wrestling as a boy you know. And sometimes it amazed me that you see two of the fighters fighting, and one put on the other, and the referee come. Shall not. Shall not. 
anymore. And because of the generation of people God is raising up like a baby, he had to say to his brother, Is there not a You see, God is raising up a generation that is serious. Hallelujah. Love it. You see, in this mm-hmm. battle, if the young man put up mind, mm-hmm. if I perish, mm-hmm. I perish. Okay. John was like that. He wasn't afraid to die. So yes, but my like, the church just come out and we have church. And the enemy operating all around us, and we just behave ourselves and let him operate. God be that with you. Those things are over. Are you getting the supper? Now we have a voice. First Samuel chapter 17, look verse 15 and 52. But I'll just show you. Same chapter 7, verse 15, 5 0 to 52. What he says. So there you are. I want you to tell yourself we are going to pray. Yes, amen. Open your mouth and say we are going to pray. We are going to prevail. Come on, say we are going to pray. We are going to prevail. Hallelujah. So they will prevail over the Philistine with the slain and with the sword. And saw the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the ship. Did out and slew him and cut off his head there. Look at this. What is going to happen now? I want you to read this together. What happened? And when the one? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? Woman. When you realize mm-hmm. the champion has fallen, is dead. Mm-hmm. The Philistine run for the life. Mm-hmm. Are you good? Thank you, Jesus. So you see what has been happening? When we deal with the Philistine, the strong man is still there and they still have mouth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And look at what happened. Look at what happened. After they fled, look at what happened. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and what? Shouted and what? Pursue the Philistines. Where are you? Israel had not been there. They were afraid. Mm. Come on. But when they realized the strong man is dead, everybody had left. Mm. Come on, somebody. The church. May not understand why you have to left from all of our babies that are coming. Everybody will get. Everybody will understand. Everybody will understand why you have to go on the radio for three hours and intercede for the nation. But guess what happened? You are not just doing this for you, you are doing this for the body of Christ in this nation.
is because of prostitution. It's because there's a strong man of orders. You have to recognize the strong man that is in operation. You know, one time, I'm just moving because, as I tell you, it's a too bad I'm going to get There was one time, Jesus was praying for a particular lady, and he recognized it. He said, you spirit of infirmity. Which means, sometimes you realize people are asthma. You know, all kind of sickness. And we go, we say, Father, you pray against that asthma. We pray against that. We pray against that. Oh, what happened? We have to see this because we never arrest the trauma of the front. Are you? A young lady was in the hospital. It was a 50 50 chance. They said, and that's why I wanted to walk with my wife to this function because when I say things, she will be here to know I cannot. I'm alive. And you can know that what you say, you can ask anybody who talk to you. 50 50 charge. She called me, I was in Bahu. That is a member of the church. She called me, she said, Evangelist, I want you to pray. Something with whatever it is, it was so bad. Right, she, she was admitted, they sent her home, and she had to go back to the hospital. Right from my home, I stayed here. And I said, you spirit of infirmity. I command you to lose your hope from all the young ladies now in the hospital. And I send you back to the pit of hell where you belong. The Sunday, this lady, let me tell you, was the I don't know what you call it, the monarch. You see, Carlos. So she was the monarch in Barbuda. Are you ready? She asked God, she said, God, if you heal me and bring me out, I will serve. False doctrine. 
unsubmissive. Speaking about false religion is because there's a strong man of error over the So I begin to do some pray and command the strong man of error to cancel his operation from over my After I begin to do that, it wasn't two weeks after. The guy who started brought Rastafarian to Bali. He called. He said, Evangelist, can you come to my house? No problem. I, I told him all that I pray. The Lord said, no. He opened up his Bible. He had the black Bible. When the Rasta, he had the black Bible with Jesus at the last. He said, can you tell me more about Jesus Christ? Last night I was here, he was in the chapel and he called myself up. I said, the man, just go straight to your home. Whatever I say to him, he don't miss it because he saw the power of Jesus Christ. I begin to arrest the strong man of error. The guy who was the head Muslim in Bali showed up at the radio station. Evangelist. Can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? He didn't come for me to pray for him in Allah or whatever. I laid hands on him. And this man who believed in Allah knelt down and began to cry. About the feet that so after he goes to the fishing, he called me. He said, Can you come and pray for my fishing boat and my fish box and all these sorts of things? I went and I prayed. I anointed every one of them and everything. He went out. This man used to go. And let me tell you something. He had stopped going fishing because nothing was happening for him. Can I speak to someone? But when you arrest the strong man of error, people who are acting for you that will come to Lord Jesus Christ. It was just a Monday. That was the second. This man only started to first, he started to bring his tithes. He said, put this in the collection of my life. Then he started to bring my lobster. Up until Monday, he went in, he brought lobster. He brought pots. And this is what he said to me. He stood up and said, he said, he said, Pastor, I don't know. But since you pray, I pray. Listen, every time I go out, there is an overflow. 